on the night shift and uh, I didn't say they should stop vigil. What I said is that's important my baby. We cannot be praying morning and night. Mo morning and night. Monday to Sunday. You can you walk Monday to you can live night vigil for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. All that you want to do it every day, it cannot work. It's never worked in any country. So you can walk through the day and do vigil at night. I pray every day. But you cannot tell me that that is what you're going through every single day. And what is happening now? We have a lot of pseudo prophets that have a man all over the place. And become a business. You have people who are real, who are doing the prayers, who are doing the reading. But I can tell you now, anybody's business that collapsed, or was his house or where else, it can not tell himself one thing. We have a lot of them. We cannot, we cannot have a system where it is, for example. And we have not turned into where people say all sorts of things in the name of God. No. We have reality. And we must know that whatever we do in life, we need the grace of God. We need the blessing of God. But it should not be used for criminal purposes like our politics is. On generational change, again, is what I said, the young ones have these criminals are not going to just have to be there. Like and some of the people who came from even in these institutions, they work with us in what we did with family. And I can tell you, they will contribute immensely, but there's a lot that we need to deal with it and all that. In issue of tribalism, uh, I can tell you, this is why Paralism, Nepotism, Paralism, it's not about the young ones, it's not that it has become a measure of competence. It has become, so if you say to me, you're not qualified, I say, oh, it's not for me because I go to this, and like always, I say everywhere I go. Is there any tribe that buys bread cheaper? No. Is there any tribe that buys food cheaper? No. no. Is there any price where the rate of exchange is low? Still, it has a manipulating tool to stay in power. It's my turn. You know? So that my turn means, is our turn because of the share? You have a country that the only thing you do is share it. Productive country. If it's for the final, that those things will disappear. Like the top you mentioned, you can't have a country today where the only thing they want to share is a diminishing asset called oil. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows oil is a diminishing asset that will soon disappear. If, if instead of they can cause it with the new capital today, which is intellectual. So if you bring it in today, they will disappear. So they want to hold on to it. That physical assets that thing that move it to where it is impossible. For example, Nigeria can make more money from agriculture. As far as I'm concerned, what annoy you? If we have sixty percent of our land all cultivated today, vastly and everything, of course we can see even even Ukraine at war gave us great <laughs> assets because the whole of that Nigeria in terms of land space is more than the entire Ukraine. Ukraine about six hundred thousand square kilometers. When we live on seven hundred or something thousand square kilometers. Mm. So if there is nothing but this cause. We want oil is easy to exploit and share. Then go where you oh, everything and all that and everything. So there's a lot we need to do in terms of trying to change that system. Everybody has to make the sacrifice and believe that we have to work through this. It is difficult, it's gonna take time, it's not gonna be a walkover because they're entrenched. I put that wrong. It did not like something million voters registered. Mm -hmm. And the, the person who is sitting in government eight point one million, which is less than that percent, which is what I voted. Mm -hmm. And I said that even at that, if you do it overall with the number of voters that cut their vote, they had below forty percent. And that two of us have about sixty percent. And in a parliamentary system would have formed government in detail and everything. So that's the correction. Mm -hmm. All I will say in terms of realism and everything. Is that it does for Nigerians for Africans? We look at what their counterparts in Asia have been able to do. Today we're talking about where is China, India, Vietnam. It was the power of the diaspora from those countries that changed it. That I know of, even from my own statements, when I studied here in Kellogg and everything, I know what the Indians were able to do. So we should do that and everything. That's what I have for in terms of a high quality for the great work they're doing already across Africa. It is critical. But you mention one thing which people will not understand. Again, the movements, you have an establishment which have been over the years. To change that is not going to be easy. Because it's a criminalized setup. We have hijacked the process. That's not going to work away. You need a sustained engagement to be able to so what happens and because they know you don't have that sustenance power. What they do is to come in immediately after the election, start buying people because it is a transnational it is a business. Kenan to Kunko came out earlier. To criticize Peter Obi vehemently, and here's what Kenneth Koko said. Take a listen. But I will never say I will convert a church to anything. It's not your business. 
when you are in government. Going to convert any church to anything. I've not heard that except nobody oh, said well. they were going to convert any church to anything. Yeah, but oh, just... I am a workaholic. Workaholic. But you know what? Prayer is my power. Because you can work all this work, but you do not, you are not progressing. You don't have the right to come out and say you will convert. You will Basically, convert if anybody, if anybody wants to be praying. All his life, it's nobody's business. Provided yes. <laughs> this is the thing. So this is what this no, is what I is that you have a yeah. right to pray, but if they can remove your body, some of the things that you pray for, you don't need to pray for them. You can pray for others. That's it. That's what the that's what the whole thing. Continue this yeah. conversation. Yes. We live largely in a very unproductive society. That's why the only thing that is attractive here is politics and church. Mm. You need to dismantle it. And we're going to turn night vigil into night shifts so people can be productive. I go to church, I believe in God. Yes. But we cannot have people Monday to Friday be in church morning and night. No. If I go from Miana to my house, the only signboard you see is signboard of churches. That's not the country. If you go to any other country, you see product. Yes, so please. We should encourage more prayers. Because if we have genuine men of God, genuine Christians, genuine Muslims. So was Kenneth problem... Okoko overreacting? Or was he just trying to gain some clout and shine? using Peter Obi's name and Peter Obi's uh, statements that he made. Because Peter Obi has come out now and clarified and said, hey, this is what I meant. I mean, people praying seven days a week, Monday to Sunday and uh, morning and night. So, guys, I mean, this uh, argument continues back and forth between the two of them. Uh, let me know, is Kenneth Okoko, I mean, is he just trying to shine off of Peter Obi? A lot of you have came out and left comment and saying, even if Kenneth Okoko was to run in a local government council election, he's not going to get five votes. So uh, it's just very interesting to see people coming after Kenneth Okoko so hard. But I'm happy that Peter Obi has clarified the air and he just said, well, this is what it means. So what he's saying here is that he meant that people should not live in the church, really. Because if you are praying morning and night and you're also praying Monday to Sunday, that's seven days a week. And uh, you ignore productivity, you ignore development and going to work. And all you do is pray morning, pray night, seven days a week that it's now turned into a business and there are many churches that do such things. So again, I know Kenneth Okonkwo, a lot of other churches have come out and they have said things like, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. How can you say such a thing? You know, leave people alone, let them pray as much as they, they want to. And people that are quick to judge him need to be very careful because uh, we cannot just uh, be praying morning, night, some days a week. When God has given you the tools and resources needed for you to develop yourself, the tools and resources ne needed for you to improve your lives. But what we do in Nigeria is, in most cases, we sit and wait for God to, to give us a chair and table when God has given us trees that we can go and cut down and make chairs and table for ourselves. So I think uh, him coming out and clarifying this kind of helps. And I really like Peter Obi and how he came out and clarified the air. And to me now, I think this should silence all the enemies. This should silence all these opponents that are saying how they come after church. And uh, like I've always maintained, like, I mean, I understand what he's saying, but I didn't like the way he kind of said he would dismantle uh, churches earlier on. But now it does make sense to me. And let me know what you guys think about this. I mean, do you agree with him? And those of you that are still on the fence about him, because some people are saying, oh, he's back walking what he has said. I don't think that's the case. I think he's really, really uh, serious and genuine. And uh, we really need a leader that can think like this and help us to achieve that better Nigeria we all hope for. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now. Bata, bata. Bata. Box.